Well, the interesting thing about seed oils is that we've got research data that demonstrates their harm. Mm. But I guess that the problem has been we've had limited mechanistic understandings, or at least a widespread knowledge of the mechanistic understandings of their harm have not been well known. So it comes down to a couple of key things. So first of all, there's, a, I guess, there's a, a common view within the low carb sphere that omega-6 fats are inherently inflammatory. And because seed oils have abundant omega-6 fats, that's why they're harmful. And this has been borne out of associational research where we have a look at the ratio of omega-6 and omega-3 fats within people's red blood cells and other tissues of their body. And we find that people with more omega-6 fats in their red blood cells do far worse on multiple parameters, uh, multiple autoimmune diseases, allergic diseases, so on and so forth, cardiovascular disease, inflammatory diseases, you name it. It's uh, having a high level of omega-6 fats in your cells is associated with adverse outcomes. But this is only associational. And I personally do not believe that it's an inherent property of omega-6 fats that is harmful. And I don't believe that's what's making seed oils harmful. So the, the fact remains that omega-6 fats are essential oils. Without them, we're not doing so good. That is the very definition of essential. So there's two key properties of seed oils that makes them harmful. So the first one is its tendency to oxidize. So the tendency to oxidize, it, it, it's akin to the chemical process of rusting. It's what happens when you have free radicals that rip electrons away from other molecules or atoms and they damage them. And if you do that to a fat or a, a protein within the body, that's going to uh, have deleterious outcomes. And we know that seed oils, by virtue of their chemical structure, these polyunsaturated bonds, where these double bonds between two adjacent carbon atoms, that is very, very reactive. We've also demonstrated that when you consume an oxidized oil, that gets incorporated into the lipoproteins of your body. Things like chylomicrons or what most people would have heard of, low density lipoprotein, what is called bad cholesterol, LDL. And then you've got circulating oxidation products. So think about it. If you've got an unhealthy diet, your LDL basically becomes a vehicle to carry oxidation around your circulation. So that's the connection between uh, oxidation and damage of your blood vessels. And LDL is basically the, the vehicle for that. So that's obviously not going to be a good thing. So oxidation is a component of seed oils, which is, you know, uh, harmful. But one thing that is not well understood, and that's something which I'm going to hope to promote a little bit more over the coming months, is something which I term fake plant cholesterol. You would have heard of plant sterols or, or phytosterol. Mm -hmm. um, and these, these chemicals, I, I think we can mount a very strong argument that they, they are absolutely deleterious to the human body. And they are in high concentration in seed oils and vegetable oils. They're in basically every plant food. So we get a not insignificant contribution to our, our phytosterol or fake plant cholesterol load from cereals by virtue of how much we eat. But on a gram for gram basis, seed oils provide us with the, with the most. Now, the thing is, this imitates cholesterol. And in some cases, the body can absorb it. But when it absorbs it, the body tries to do things with it that it would normally do, that it would normally use cholesterol for, but because of some molecular variation, very subtle molecular variation, it can't do it. So it basically leads to deficient functions of things that cholesterol is normally used for. Now, the irony is that we use these plant sterols to try and lower our body's lipoprotein levels. Because as you know, lipoproteins contain cholesterol. And if you can create defective cholesterol within the body, then it's going to have trouble synthesizing low density lipoprotein or synthesizing VLDL, very low density lipoprotein, which shrinks down into low density lipoprotein. So that, that's how these, our, our cholesterol levels, or you know, what we call our cholesterol levels, our lipoprotein levels are actually lowered with plant sterol. So we often use this therapeutically to lower people's cholesterol. Mm. But here's a question for you. If this is such a good thing, what would happen to somebody who would absorb an unusually large amount of these plant sterols? 
they must have very good cardiovascular health because it would lower their cholesterol and it would be very good for them. That if we follow this theory through to the logical conclusion, that's where we should be. If plant sterols are good because they lower your LDL, people who absorb more plant sterols would do better. And this is in the context of the fact that most of us will only absorb about 1% of the plant sterols we consume because our body is doing its damnedest to try not to absorb them. It's mm. kicking them out. But if you consume a bucket load in seed oils, in a standard Western diet, then some is going to get through. So we only absorb about 1%, but some people absorb a lot more. They've got a, a genetic uh, change in their DNA that leads to just excess absorption of plant sterols. That condition is called cytosterolemia. S-I-T-O-S-T-E-R-O-L-A-E-M-I-A. -E -E um, but cytosterolemia is a condition, and I quote, that is associated with advanced, severe, premature atherosclerosis. Yeah. So these plant sterols, which we're giving people to prevent heart disease, if you just happen to absorb more of them than is normal, then you're probably going to die of a heart attack.